Welcome everyone. Here we are back again in another video in the authentication system of the Tickets Basket solution. Right now, almost we have accomplished everything we want to accomplish. We still have only one thing, which is very important. As you know, because the API is protected and here we are using the Azure Active Directory and it's based on an access token. So what we have to do is to fit the access token and set it to the request of uh, in the header of each HTTP request we want to send to the API. So the API can fit that request, send it to the Azure Active Directory P2C to make sure that it's valid and then give that user access to the resources if it is a valid token. So basically this is what we are going to do in this session and there is a, in, within a Blazor Web Assembly there is a service called iToken, uh, iAccess Token Provider and that service what it does is basically we say, we give it a specific scoop like this one API.readWrite and it tries to fetch the access token for us if the user is logged in or is logged in let's say. So that's a great and the thing that we are going to do exactly in this session is to configure an HTTP client and a session of HTTP client and attach a message handler to it. What message handler is it is something that's similar to the middleware in the ASP.NET Core web application. You know the middleware when the HTTP request comes to the server and sent to the ASP.NET Core web application, the app receives that HTTP request and then this request goes uh, from one middleware to another and to the end and each one of those middleware that uh, do, does a specific job and send that request to the second middleware or retrieves back to the client from that process from uh, that point the messaging handler is just working the same thing for the http client you set a message handler for that and whenever you are uh, sending any http request to the api uh, this message uh, the request goes through a set of messaging handler in our case there's going to be only one and that messaging handler prepare uh, that request in a way or another and even the same thing for the response. So the messaging handler that we are going to use, which is basically pre-built and it already exists in the Microsoft uh, Blazor.authentication library called authorization messaging handler. And what it does is basically, whenever we send any request, it uh, tries to fetch a specific access token for a specific scoop and set it at the header of, at the authorization header of the request and send it to the server. So in this case, you configure that only one time with just a few lines of code and you forget about access token forever. So you just secure components and whenever you want to access or to make any request to the API, the messaging handler is taking care of that uh, part or take that responsibility by fetching the access token, set it in the header and push it back uh, with the request to the API. So you will uh, not deal with that at all just by configuring that. So let's get started. Before we do anything, what we have to do is just to install a library called uh, Microsoft.extensions.http, which contains uh, some extension methods will going to help us initialize that HTTP client. So let's install that library by going to the package manager console here within the client tickets basket application. And let's execute the command install package Microsoft extensions.http okay great right now here we have the library and let's remove this one and we will use an extension method called add http client so this one is going to prepare an http client for us and it will take two parameters the first one is the name let's give it a name we'll give it the name of the api tickets basket dot api just like this and the second parameter is just an action delegate that takes that HTTP client as a parameter so you can configure it the way you want. And what I want to do with it is just to set the base address for this uh, instance of HTTP client. So I'll type base address equals new URI like this. And here I will pass the URI, but I won't pass it statically here. I will put it within the app settings.json. So first, let's go to the API project, click on the properties, and then go to the debug section, and click copy here for the URL, 
and let's go back to the www root app settings.json and I will create another property here call it app or API URL let's paste that here that's great so right now whenever we in, uh, or when we go to the production we just simply can change this value and we are ready to go so click save and here to fit that value from the configuration we set builder dot configuration and here we type API URL so that's a great right now we have initialized the instance with the base address the Another thing that we have to do for this HTTP client is to configure that messaging handler. Basically, you can create your own messaging handler for uh, uh, for this HTTP client, and this is what we will do that in another session regarding the timing and dealing with the time zones of the user. But for now, we will use a pre-built uh, messaging handler called uh, authorization message handler. So I'll type add HTTP message handler. I will use this overload because I will use the service provider to fetch an instance of that provider get required service. The type of it is authorization. Message handler like that. I missed that, that. Okay. Like this. So that's great. Right now, this is an instance of authorization message handler and which is basically, as you can see, delegating handler that attaches access tokens to the outgoing HTTP response message. Okay, it should be HTTP request message. Okay, it attaches an access token to the HTTP request that goes to the API. Another thing that we need to do, this handler contains a function called configure handler Okay, this one, and let's see what it takes. It takes three parameters. The first one is a collection of URLs of the APIs, of the secured your uh, APIs. Another uh, parameter, which is basically another collection of string for the scoops we want to have access. In our application, we have only one scoop called API.readWrite, and the third parameter called return URL, which is when uh, tries to uh, fit the access token and basically the user is not logged in or something like this so what's going to happen maybe you can just redirect the user uh, to the login page and something like this so what we are going to do right now is just set the authorized URLs and the scoops so here for the authorized URLs I'll create an array of strings and it's going to contain only one value which is the base URL of the API we can fit that again from the app settings.json configuration and API URL just like this. This is for the first parameter. Right now, for the second one, which is the scoops, again, I will create an array of strings. Okay, and here, I'm not going to make this statically as well. I will cut that and put it in the app settings.json again, but I will put it here within the Azure Active Directory P2C uh, object. Okay, I will call it scoop and I will paste that here. So that's great, and right now, because it's existing within another object, like nested object, so to access that, the configuration, I'll call it uh, Azure, and P2C, and Scoop. Yeah, let's make sure of the name here. Okay, great. So, right now, this is everything you need to initialize or to prepare an HTTP client instance. Uh, let's make just a very quick recap. The HTTP client, add HTTP client extension method, uh, it prepares an HTTP client for you. And here we have configured the base address for that client. And then we have used another extension method called add HTTP message handler. And we attached a message handler called authorization which is already exists in the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly Authentication. And this one is responsible for fetching an access token for this scoop and set it at the authorization header for the outgoing HTTP request when we send any request for this API or the API that, the, the protected API. So that's it. Here we have, yeah, to 
pass the scoop Azure at P2C, uh, sorry, like this. Great. Right now, everything is ready and it's a pretty simple. The last step we should do is this one is just preparing an instance of this client. But to register that in the DNS injection container, we have to get that instance and then register it in the Luminance injection container. And to get an instance of this HTTP client pre-configured, uh, uh, HTTP client, sorry, uh, we will use a service called IHTTP client factory. So let's see how we can do this. Builder.services.add transient here. And I'm going to use the service provider again. I'm going to call get required service. And the type of the service I want to get is IHTTP client factory. Great. And this one, right now I have instance of this, contains a method called the create a client. And this one takes two uh, has two overloads. The first one that uh, takes no parameter, and so basically just going to initialize a new HTTP client for you. And the second one takes a string, which is the name for an HTTP client. So this one, if we pass the name here, ticketspasket.api, so it's going to initialize this one. Not a new one, not, uh, not to be configured with anything. So this one going to have the base address of our API and be configured with authorization message handler. That's it. So right now, whenever you inject an HTTP client within your components, it's going to initialize or inject this one. So that's a great. Let's test this by making a call for the weather forecast. Uh, this get endpoint here within the for weather forecast controller in the API. So as you can see, this controller is protected. So we should log in and get an access token to be able to access this resource. Great. I will go here to the pages, fetch data here. And OK, if you go here right now, this one is trying to fetch the data for, uh, from the whether the JSON file within the www root. So let's change it and set to the weather for cast controller, this one, to the and the get request that doesn't have a name. OK, and another thing I have to do is to protect this uh, component so the user cannot access it if he's not logged in. So to do this, Let's decorate it with an attribute called authorize. Great. This authorize, we should import the namespace of it. I will import it here in the imports. At using Authentication. Just like that. It's existing here. OK, great. So right now, if the user tries to access this component, it will be re redirected directly to the login page. After the user logs in, then this component will be shown and a new instance of HTTP client will be prepared for us. And when we send that request, what's going to happen is uh, this one here, the authorization message handler will go fetch and the access token for this scoop, set it at the header and send it to the API. So let's see how this will work. So just before we run the project, let's make sure that the, uh, the Blazor Web application and the API will run together. So I'll right click on the solution, click on Set Startup Projects, and choose Multiply Startup Projects. And here, choose Start, set the action for Start for the Tickets Basket, and even for the API. I think we should uh, rename the Tickets Basket for Tickets Basket of Blazor. So great. Right now, let's click on Start. So here, as you can see, by default, the API will redirect you to the uh, weather forecast controller and it, it will return as HTTP error 401 because you have, don't have access for this. You have to be logged in. So let's move right now to the Blazor app and I will go to the fetch data. As you can see, I have been redirected to this page directly because it's a protected. I'll try to log in with my account. OK. Click sign in. Okay, here we have 
got an error. Let's go to the console and see what's going on. Okay, yeah, uh, the problem here is related to the course because as you know, in the web development, another domain or a client app, JavaScript app, or any single page application cannot make calls for an API with a different domain without allow the API allow this app to do so. So what we have to do is just to configure the course here. We can go to the startup.cs and the API, and here I'm going to add course options options dot add policy. This policy I would call it course policy. Here we can configure it. So for the time being, I'm going to set it for all, any origin, any method, and any header. But when we go to the Azure and move that uh, this application online, it will make sure that we will specify only the Blazor client to make these calls. So here I will call use course, and we can pass the name of uh, the policy. That's great. Right now, everything should work fine. Okay, so let's go again to the fidget data and log in. Oh, great! Here it is. I have all my data comes from this protected API. If I go here to the controller and here you can see it's authorized and protected and I have successfully was able to fetch all this data and here it's not possible because it's secured. So this means that right now the HTTP client works well with the, author, uh, with the authorization message handler. It goes successfully, logs in, uh, fits the access token for the API read write and uh, read write scoop, send that request to the API and that API was successfully able to validate the access token using the Azure Active Directory and then retrieves that uh, the result back to the client. So this means, this is amazing and congratulations because uh, regardless of the tickets pass can and what, there is a very long journey still remaining, but uh, till the moment you are just ready to develop any Blazor and WebAssembly application associated with an ASP.NET Core API with Azure Active Directory fully secured and you, you know how to initialize the application, how to initialize the tenants, how to register the applications in the Azure Active Directory P2C, how to prepare the policies for sign in, sign up and reset password, and how you can uh, create the application, the ASP.NET Core and the Blazor. In addition to all of this, how to configure the HTTP client to take the responsibility for fetching the access token, put it in the header and send it to the uh, API. So, this is the first checkpoint, we are done from it. Right now we can come back to the, um, to the rest of the application, like creating the database, setting up the repositories, the Swagger UI, and complete with the business logic. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button to stay updated and to support us for more and more videos. And if you have any question or if anything is not clear, you can directly put the question in the comment section. I will try to answer as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.